Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. You've seen the mathematics of profit maximisation. Now let's draw some diagrams. The diagrams we're going to use are given by these set of axes. We have dollars on the vertical axis and we have the quantity produced by the individual firm on the horizontal axis. And let's start off by thinking about what a total cost function will look like. How total costs as measured in dollars will vary as the firm produces more output. Well, our total cost function is going to start over here with zero output and a value of F. F is just going to be our level of fixed costs. So you know that there the costs or the amount that we must spend in order to produce anything. So our total cost curve will start at F. What's it going to look like initially? Well, we expect our total cost to increase as output increases, but what shape are we going to have for the curve? Well, here's one that sounds reasonable. Initially, our costs will increase, but they may do so at a decreasing rate. So initially, our total cost function increases, but sort of bends down. Why could it have that shape? One reason why the total cost curve may increase at a decreasing rate, at low levels of output, is because if you're only producing a small level of output, then you can't use your inputs very efficiently. For example, imagine you were trying to run a car plant with perhaps two people. They'd be running back and forth along the production line trying to do the various jobs. As you start to increase production and employ more people, you can actually do things more efficiently. Whilst your total cost increases, it actually increases at a decreasing rate. As we produce more and more output, however, total costs are likely to start increasing at an increasing rate. So we have this area here where total costs are not just rising, but they're getting steeper and steeper. Why might that be the case? Some engineers argue for total costs should never increase at an increasing rate. Their reasoning is quite simple. Suppose you've got a factory that is operating efficiently. If you want a double output, you can always just build an identical factory. Double output at double the cost. Want a triple output? Build another factory. Triple output, triple the cost. In that situation, total cost is increasing at a linear rate. Why do economists think that total costs actually increase at an increasing rate? Well, what the engineers forget is the costs of organising a company or an organisation. When you double the number of factories, you tend to more than double the number of administrators. You may have one manager for a factory, but as soon as you have two factories, you have the manager for each factory, and then you have to have someone managing the managers. So you add another layer of hierarchy. And if you go to three factories, you might need to have not only the manager of the managers, but you may need a manager who manages the manager's managers, and so on. As organisations get bigger, they become more bureaucratic, and that drives total costs up at an increasing rate. So now we've got an example of a total cost function. But what does the average cost and the marginal cost that are associated with this total cost function, what do they look like? Let's first look at marginal costs. Remember that the marginal costs are just the change in total costs when we produce one more unit of output, the change in dollars for an extra unit of output, or rise over run, or in other words, marginal cost is simply given by the slope of a total cost curve. So initially, our marginal cost starts high, the curve slopes up at a high rate, the, curve, the total cost curve then becomes flatter, so marginal costs are falling, and then it becomes steeper again, 
so marginal costs are rising. Let's draw that on another set of axes. So let's pop our total cost curve down here, where we can reference it later, and bring out another set of axes. We're going to draw our marginal cost on these set of axes. To draw our marginal cost curve, remember it was falling at low levels of output, but then starts to rise again at higher levels of output. So our marginal cost curve is going to look something like this. It's going to be decreasing, as is initially a better use of inputs, but as the costs of expanding a business take over, that's going to drive up the marginal cost curve. What about average costs? Well, actually, average costs are easy to draw on the same diagram as marginal costs. So if we want to draw average costs, well, remember, whenever we've got a fixed cost, average costs are going to start out really, really high. Remember, they go towards infinity as quantity goes to zero, because the fixed cost divided by zero is infinitely large. And then they're going to fall. And my claim is that the average cost curve associated with this marginal cost curve is going to look pretty much like the red curve here. In particular, it's going to start very high, it's going to fall, and it's going to cross the marginal cost curve at exactly the point where it stops falling and average cost starts rising. Why? Well, that's something we're going to think about next time. Talk to you then.